Welcome back to Sideshow Live. Now, I know we told you that we had an unboxing, but uh, we kind of did you one better than that. We have a very special guest in the Sideshow studio with us today. Um, this is Mr. Steve Bloom. So everyone out there, say hi to Steve Bloom. Hey guys, they uh, unboxed me just before. Yes, this, so we I, did. We took him out of the part. box. He's He's yeah. fresh right now. Um, he's basically the voice of like all the coolest characters in animation. Uh, Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop, Zeb from Rebels, and then of course Wolverine from Wolverine and the X Men. And you've also been like Rocket Raccoon and wow. uh, wait, Green Goblin, Red Skull, Dark Side, Bane. Why yeah. Were you, why were you Bane? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know more about my career than I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm not going to lie. I told everybody this when you were coming in. Wolverine and the X-Men is legit one of my favorite animated series like of all time. I think it's just like kind of a definitive X-Men series oh. that you should watch if you're an X-Men fan. Mine so, too. It should still be going. I know! It didn't get the run that it deserved, no. in my opinion. No. So, there Politics, you go. Politics, I'm going yeah. after them. Uh, yeah. um, so, we just have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, so you voiced, again, like I just listed, some of the most iconic characters and from the biggest fandom. So um, how do you even begin to choose a voice for a character like that? Uh, well, it usually starts with a description or a picture. <laughs> and once I have that, it's an organic process. I've, I'm not a classically trained actor. <laughs> so from the very beginning, it, was, it just started with a feeling, as, as all of us nerds would have when we're reading a comic book or or a graphic novel, mm -hmm. those voices sort of pop up in our heads. Mm -hmm. I was just able to articulate that. So That's since I was a little kid, I would have these voices in my head. And when I grew up, then you know something like Wolverine would actually be possible to come out. <laughs> but that's literally the voice that I would hear in my head when I was That's really comics. cool. I never thought of it that way. But so when you see like a character like Zeb, who you've actually kind of never seen before, right. how, how is that, is that process a little bit different? Like, do you tweak it? Yeah, Zeb was a completely different process for me because he's, he's brand new to the universe. I didn't know it was Star Wars at first. Really? They, everything was heavily coded. It was called Wolf at the time. Uh, and the character had a completely different name. There, were, there was nothing uh, relating to Star Wars in the sides that I got, the original descriptions, oh, wow. the sides that I got. So it was just based on a type, and it was based on a, a soldier character. They, they told me a little bit about it, what his backstory was, but didn't give away anything. So the first thing that came to mind when I uh, read the description was this type of voice. Just And they, they said they would probably have some sort of accent. They weren't sure which. The first huh. thing I started with was a cockney type of thing, uh -huh. but it was too thick and, and unintelligible. Mm -hmm. So uh, once we got into the studio, we started refining it. and. And once I realized that I actually had the job, first I had to go through the fanboy scream. And I realized <laughs> that it was that you're Star gonna be Wars. A Star Wars. You're going to be a Star Wars character. Yeah. And that it was canon. And yeah. Well, this, this is actually kind of a funny thing. Okay. I, I I went through final auditions for this thing, and I think they told me it was Star Wars in the audition, but it just didn't sink in that mm -hmm. I would be, have the possibility of being part of a Star Wars show. Mm -hmm. I had been part of the Star Wars universe in games for years and years and years. Um, so like all auditions, I did it, I left, and I didn't think about it again. Until several months later, I was in uh, England, uh, Birmingham, actually. Oh. I was just talking to Andy about this. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, for a Transformers convention. Okay. And um, I get the call that I booked this new show, and I had to find a studio immediately. So they find me the studio in the suburbs. I take a taxi out there. It's in the middle of nowhere in some guy's house. <laughs> and I walk in there, and this guy sends me up to his studio, and I'm looking at the the script and I have them on the phone on the other end. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was talking to. And I'm reading through a script and I see stormtroopers. And I went, Stormtroopers? This is Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> this is Star Wars. And I think I, I screamed out loud when I realized what that was. Oh my and God. Dave Filoni and the whole group uh -huh. were on the other end of the phone. <laughs> and uh, after my meltdown, I finally started working with them on defining the character. In the audition process, we had uh, gone through. Eastern European, German, we went through a whole bunch of different types of dialects. But the one that they liked the best uh, was derived from sort of my bad English accent. <laughs> we threw a little bit of Australian in, uh, a little Northern England wow. from time to time. So it wouldn't be absolutely definable. Mm -hmm. They couldn't pinpoint it to one region. Because wow. he's from space. He's yeah, from he's from space. He's um, not from anywhere. Yeah, so we, uh, we just kind of went with what felt natural, and, and this type of thing is what we landed on. That's so yeah. cool. Wow. And then so on that line, I mean, I guess you kind of answered this question, but when you create um, a new character like Zeb, um, how is that, uh, like, 
you've per, you've portrayed Wolverine in, in not only Wolverine and the X-Men, but you were in Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes as Logan mm -hmm. as well. Like, do you, does that adjust for the type of show and the type of script, or do you just kind of stick with your original Logan voice that you created throughout the whole thing? Wolverine, more than any other character, is Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to keep it as true as I can, and they generally hire me based on that mm -hmm. original voice. And that said, I've had to audition every time I've played Wolverine. Really? Because they want to make sure, and, th and they will do certain tweaks. Like when we did Hulk Versus, we did this uh -huh. movie, um, Wolverine went a little extra feral. He was drawing blood for the first time. Oh, wow. And so instead of going, <coughs> he went, <coughs> and really dug in. <laughs> and uh, we did um, Superhero Squad also. Yeah. Where it was sort of a chibi version of Wolverine. Right. He still had to have that same Wolverine intensity, but in this voice. Oh, so okay. <laughs> he was still angry all the time and still wanted to snick to everybody. Uh -huh. He actually said the word snicked out loud, too. So, but yeah, which that onomatopoeia has yeah. never been said out loud before, right. as far as I know. Uh -huh. So we got to do that. That's that's really the only time that something like that would really change. But from X-Men Legends and Avengers and all the other uh, incarnations where Wolverine did show up, it's it's pretty much yeah. you know, the knucklehead. So then knucklehead. the fact that you've played all these amazing, like, badasses, like, on, on screen and everything, mm -hmm. do you ever just, like, something annoys you and you slip into the, like... Hey, bub, type voice. Like, I, or, I used to or try the Cockney, like. <laughs> I used to try to use that with my kids, and they just laugh at me. Oh, really? Yeah, they they were not impressed. I I have used it before. It was actually having a deeper voice as a young kid kept me from getting beaten up. I was bullied when I was a kid, oh. and uh, my voice dropped when I was about twelve or thirteen, uh -huh. and I, that was my superpower. That's what kept me alive. You know, I'd, wow. see, I'd see these bullies who had been beating the crap out of me uh, on the play playground, and I'd see them when they weren't supposed to be, when they were supposed to be in class, you know, mm -hmm. running around the halls. I just go, boy, get back to class! And then I'd run around the corner, I just could see the guys, you know, kind of go like this. <laughs> that's when I would use it, really. Oh, wow, back then. that's awesome. And if, if somebody is really um, being ridiculous in an argument, sometimes I will start dropping the voice mm -hmm. and, and the projection will get a little bit louder mm -hmm. and the veins will start coming out in the face and, and then I will use it, I'll summon it a little bit. But for the most part, I'm a really nice guy. I don't, oh, I don't, I don't well. like confrontation. <laughs> yeah. So then, who is your favorite character that you've played? Oh, like I know. They're like children. I know, right? That's the worst right? question. That's you can the worst ask. question. I'm the, so sorry. <laughs> the one character that probably defined uh, my life and my career and set me in a completely different direction more than any other would be Spike, I think. It was, uh, Spike came along at a time in my career what I, where I didn't really uh, consider voiceover to be a career. Oh, I had a wow. whole other job that I was doing. I was an executive at a film company and I was doing uh, anime for fun on mm -hmm. the side. Just, I loved it. But when Spike came along, um, actually years after it was produced, I was at a convention and Mary Elizabeth, my girlfriend, mm -hmm. who was the director of the show and played Julie on the show, we were doing a panel somewhere in the world and I was sitting with a bunch of really great actors and the question came up about classical uh, about training classical training and that sort of thing and since I was the only one on the panel that hadn't done the theater or the classical training route I didn't consider myself to be a real actor oh, wow. and she she stopped me in the middle of what I was saying she goes what do you think you've been doing all this time right and I went oh I guess I'm a, I guess I'm a voice actor yeah now. okay so that that shifted my perspective on what the industry was and also the effect that that show had on so many people all over the world and continues to 18 years later uh, has just been the most amazing anomaly. And it's led to so many other things yeah. too. It led to Tom from Toonami, uh -huh. it led to um, Megas XLR. Mm -hmm. And I found out even Legend of Korra, yeah. uh, the, the guys who created that show told me after we finished recording that it was a big influence on them. Yep. I, are you kidding me? You guys, you're the avatar creators. Yeah, yeah. My brother and I have a six year age gap, so it was always like really difficult to relate to him uh, in a lot of ways, but he got really, really into Cowboy Bebop. So we would like, because I moved out from the house like earlier, and so we would actually like talk on the phone about episodes. Like like that's how I connected to my brother and when I uh, couldn't connect to him like with this age gap. So thank you for that See, as well. that's <laughs> that's the reason I do this. this yeah. that, at first it was just, be for fun, yeah. But going to conventions and hearing stories like uh -huh. that gives me purpose, yeah. and and I keep yeah. that in my mind every time I'm doing a character. That's so thank amazing. you for sharing. Of course.